Welcome to today's interview. If you have been following me, you know that I'm always talking to entrepreneurial women or people who help entrepreneurial women about the, the things in our business that kind of can keep us stuck. And one of the things that you hear all the time, especially when you're starting a business is you need a relationship with a banker, you need a bail team. And the B in bail team is for banker. But what does it mean to have a relationship with a banker? Why should you have a relationship with a banker? How do you do this? It's just one of those things that I think people push off their plates for a little too long. So that's why I'm so excited to have Heather Mulhall here. She is from Tompkins Trust Company. She is the business development officer. I'm gonna let her tell you all about that. But I first wanted to say, Heather, it has been an epic journey in us finally getting together. <laughs> and here we are. I'm so glad to be talking to you because I think this is a topic that not a lot of people talk about. I know this is this is long time coming, but thank goodness. And it's good to see you, you know. Nice to see you too. Can you talk a little bit about what your job is and who you help at Tompkins Trust? Yeah, absolutely. So at Tompkins Trust, they I'm called a business development officer, but really I'm at the heart of it, I'm a commercial lender. So I mm. I really I help our smaller business owners um with lending needs. Okay. So, but it goes beyond that. So I I'm able because I have a long history in the branch, the branches as well. So I'm, I have commercial lending experience and I also have a branch experience. So I'm able to mm -hmm. kind of holistically look at our customers and help them expand, you know, into things like I can help them with their personal finances. I can help them with even things like home equity, personal credit, business credit, um, like I mentioned before. But I also act as kind of a quarterback too, because I have a lot of business lines right here in my office. So I'm able to kind of connect them with the people that I think that they need to, should be talking to. So when people come to you, what's the main problem they're dealing with? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it's kind of one of the things that I, I really dislike. Um, it's one of the things that I, I really advocate a lot for when I'm talking to my business owners or even my clients is, you know, don't go to your bank when you have a problem. I mean, go to your bank when you have a problem. Absolutely go to your bank when you have a problem. You're going to need to, but don't feel like you have to wait to go to your bank until you have a problem. Come and talk to us. So one of the things I tell a lot of my small business owners that are just starting out is make your banker your friend. Tell them about your dreams and goals. Tell them what you want to do. Tell them about two years, three years, five years, whatever it is. Let them know because what they'll do for you is open up the roadway. They're going to, um, you know, give you kind of a roadmap, give you a guide, give you an idea of what you need to be doing to get there from a banking standpoint, because what you need to do for your business is what you need to do for your business. But when it comes to getting a loan or, or doing something else when it comes to banking, you're going to need to plan and you're going to need to do things right. So I would say that did not ever occur to me. <laughs> you do have a relationship. A mm -hmm. Okay. So um, is the fact that you are in a local community bank, does that foster relationships differently than in a bigger corporate bank? Is that something that you guys pride yourself on? I think there's a lot of pieces to that um, that make it different. Okay. So having worked for a larger financial institution, um, I think people that work in larger financial institutions, um, I don't want to say that they're more transactional, but I want to say that there's a lot more, they're going a lot faster in general. There's a lot of um, outside noise coming in. There's a lot of, um, you know, maybe because their marketing or their website or their name is out there, or they're advertising a lot, they, they've got a lot more to triage in. So sometimes the responsiveness isn't maybe what you could expect from a smaller bank, where you might have a, a, a shorter line to get to somebody. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that at the larger financial institutions that there aren't those deep relationships, but, um, you know, we have, like, if I need to talk to somebody, my person is, is in a headquarter, is at our headquarters in Ithaca, and I just pick up the phone and call them. I'm not calling somebody who's in a different time zone trying to figure things out um, and that may have had calls from all, diff all over the country from people like right. me that have the same thing. So that's you know, one the reason. The reason I, I originally reached out to speak with you is 
back when we first connected, COVID had just hit and my clients were telling me that their relationship with their banker, the people who had a relationship with their banker were getting their PPP loans much faster and more easily than those who had not developed a relationship over the course of several years. And so I was like, oh, this is something that not enough people are thinking about. And that's really what I'm hearing from you is go in before and develop a relationship. But I'm going to, from my perspective as a small business owner, I feel like I don't want to be bothering somebody. I don't want to like come into the <laughs> bank and say, I don't really have a problem, but I just want to tell you my hopes and dreams. And I've got a couple of tens of thousands of dollars in the bank, maybe, but I don't have like a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I just wouldn't want to bother anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I mean, I get it, you know, and, and right. You may probably, you know, have some resistance there, you know, but but if you come at it from a professional, in a professional way, you know, mm -hmm. if you come at it from, you're going to call the bank, you're going to say, I, I want to talk to the person who can do this for me. And then, you know, you make an appointment and you're respectful of their time. Mm -hmm. There's, there, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, we're, we're reaching out to our customers. I know I am all the time to see how they're doing. So if I already know, then that's great. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, an hour long conversation. It could just be, you know, I've seen people in the lobby who it's like, Hey, how you doing? You know, how's business? And they're like, Oh, it's great. You know, ah, it's a good thing. I saw you. I forgot to tell you, I'm thinking about buying an investment property. Okay, great. Well, let's, mm. let's, let's sit down and chat about that sometime. Okay. You know, yeah. When I have 10 minutes, I'll stop in. So yeah, you know, it's that's such a good point is like, some, I mean, it's, it's like everything. There's always somebody with an outside perspective who can help us see things more clearly. And as entrepreneurs, we're often working in this silo where mm -hmm. we think we're supposed to know everything and do everything. Mm -hmm. And we can give ourselves a break on that. You can, you know, I've talked to, I think of two business, two business clients in the past couple of days who are going through things that had they talked to a banker prior, um, they wouldn't be going through it. So, you know, learning the hard way, but, okay. you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I was a business owner too. So there's a lot that you're going to fail forward in and that's okay. Like nobody's judging you, whatever. It's fine. Right, right, right. But, you know, I guess my point is, yeah, it goes back to that. Don't be afraid, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to say something. Um, we're always, we're more than just, we're more than just people who can, you know, put in applications or, or stuff. Like think of us as, Truly, yeah, it's part of your bail team, part of your advisor team. Um, you know, and I always say to surround yourself with people that you can bounce ideas off of and, and let us be one of them. So tell us, what are some of the things we should be thinking about as small business owners, some of the vital things, foundational things that, that if we knew, we could actually make our lives easier, but also your job easier? Uh, let's see, <laughs> let me unpack this one. Where do we start? No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, good accountants and bookkeepers are, are worth their weight in gold. You know, I get it. Everybody wants to keep their, their expenses down. Um, but if you are really thinking of scaling, if you're really thinking of growing, you know, that it's so important that you get that right. Um, because okay. really you know, especially we, I keep saying lending, but if it, when it comes to getting a loan, you know, you could be making money and not showing it right. And, and if it doesn't look right on black and white paper and on a tax return, it doesn't happen. It's not there. We can't find it anywhere. It's very black and white. Okay. So, um, and, and there's a lot of services out there too, that'll even let you, you know, um, grab for a few hours, like, Hey, help me clean up my books and, and I can have you for a few hours or whatever it may be. So yeah, make, get that right. And I always say to my business owners, and this is one way that I really approach my, my customer's relationship, my customer relationships in general, it's, which is you're great at what you do. You're passionate about what you do. Let the people like, I mean, like us, I use the example of myself, let your banker be good at what they do. You know, let, let us take stuff off your plate. Let us let us help you with things to make make your life easier and more efficient and all that sort of thing. Um, what else? I can think of. Uh, so yeah. So back to your question, right? Um, when the, you're going to buy a building, so let's say you want to have an office space, and 
Um, it's too late when you found something you love, you are maybe you're already lacing it and you want to buy it from the owner. It's too late when that comes, like when that time comes and you show us your tax returns and you've been messing them all up and you're not showing the right profit and you've got too many write-offs and, and, you know, so yeah, that wow. kind of thing. Okay. Good to think about. Is there anything else that I'm like not asking that would really help, especially women, small business owners, as they are starting to, you know, it would be so great if you're starting out to, to do some things right before you fail forward, right? Like, so to put some things in place. So I have, I guess this is like kind of two questions I have. What do you see as small business owners, maybe especially women like resisting doing that kind of bites them in the butt later on that mm -hmm. they could avoid? And mm -hmm. also, what do you, what do you really wish that your small business owners would do no matter where they are in the arc of their journey? Small business owners, I think that there's another piece of small business too. small, you know, is that you have, you're always going to be, it's the, the business finances are always going to fall on you. So make sure that your own financial house is clean and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not talking about perfect, but we're saying that have a good handle on things um, in your own personal life. You know, if, it, and don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to tell people. So there's been oftentimes when I, you know, I think women, I think sometimes we're, we're so hard on ourselves in general. It's just, kind of the way we are, um, and we, we think we have to be perfect is that they're, they're reticent to, to talk about maybe some of the skeletons in their closet or, or some of the things that they've been through. And, and none of that's, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to be successful in your business or your bank's not going to work with you or anything like that. It's just, it, just tell us, you know, you got to be honest, be upfront. So, so keep your financial house in order, be upfront, just be upfront. Because, you know, I, 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 it's a great expression in banking that says everything is fixable. <laughs> so is it? Fixable. Yeah. Okay. It is. Because I you think know. that, and I'm speaking as a woman, as a woman who um, never took care of my own finances, always kind of gave it over to my husband to do. Um, for years, I was a teacher, so I didn't really make a lot of money. I have a lot of like, I, I came to the marriage with a lot of consumer debt. I came to the marriage with a lot of uh, education debt. So I've always been like, well, when it comes to money and only in the past, I would say 10 years, have uh, I've been willing to even look at my relationship with money. So all of this has been very hard for me. And so to hear somebody who's actually in the banking industry, who looks at numbers every day and like, they're just probably data to you where it's very mm -hmm. emotional to mm -hmm. me. To hear you talking in such a gentle way about it, like you don't have to judge yourself and everything is fixable and we're here to partner with you. I, I can't express how, like it makes me want to tear up because um, there's so much emotion around money. Mm -hmm. And especially if you've been somebody like me who came with debt and never made any money. And in my first business, we, we like, oh my God, we never made a dime. We worked so hard and we never made a dime. Mm -hmm. So to come to know that there are people in banking out there who are not going to judge you for it and not going to like should all over you, you should, 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 mm -hmm. um, is very, it's very relieving to me. I'm really glad we're having this conversation. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And I think, you know, there, yeah, you do, that, that also speaks to, to something that I really, I always tell, I, there's a, I've done, business lending classes before where we're, you know, we're talking to new business owners and what do I, how am I going to get a loan and, and how am I going to do that? And it's a, it's really, really important to have a good relationship with your banker. And I mean that you should trust them. You should feel good about being able to share with them. You should, you know, it, it should really, we should be part of your advisor team, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and also, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how we feel about it. It's that simple. I know it's great, great to start thinking about. And I'm going to ask people in my audience to start thinking about where is your money now? Do you have a relationship with the people? Do you feel good about the relationship? Do you feel like you could call them up and say, I'm thinking about this, or I don't know what to do about a PPP, or are we eligible for idle? And all of those things that are happening right now, I know that there's more money coming in right now for us mm -hmm. to get more PPP. And it feels really scary to people. And I also know that it's very easy for people 
women, like I'm talking about like people like my, me and my clients to go to maybe to a Facebook group where people are like, maybe you're in a Facebook group with other entrepreneurs, but why not go to quote unquote, the horse's mouth and yeah. develop a relationship with somebody that you trust who can give it to you straight. Like what a relief that would be. Yeah. There's also, I mean, yeah, the whole PPP thing was really interesting and you know, yeah, there it's so yeah, from the banking standpoint, from the outside in, it was it was pretty crazy, and and you know people were scrambling, and that was not not fun to see. And um, you know, I even was in a position at some point in time where I, I couldn't help people, but I I did see a lot of people get helped. And you know, I like what you say about you know the Facebook groups and and stuff like that. But but remember too that your banker can be a great resource. Like I know. You know, I I have um, you know have had access to and have listened to tons of different webinars and things like that from from local accounting firms that are just putting content out there and just helping people. And you know, we've got sheets we can give you and all that sort of thing. So so yeah, remember too that your bank you know let your bank do a little bit of well work for you too. You know, and again it goes back to that. Don't be afraid to ask. You know, what's the worst that they're gonna say is no, I can't I can't help you. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are so many things out there and, and, um, there's so many different programs too, that we know about, and, and that's kind of important. And it's not always, you know, yeah, I talk a lot about lending, but it isn't always about lending either. You know, sometimes it's just, yeah, helping you, um, navigate your account better or, or, you know, knowing about a service that might put hours back in your day, you know, that you didn't know was out there. Um, so yeah, there's more that we probably can do for you. This is so interesting. So is there anything out, are there any other services that you think small business owners should know about that we haven't covered yet? Um, I'm, you know, I take for granted a lot because I think I'm in, I'm in it every day, right? Yeah, it's like, but, um, it's like breathing to you. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, we talk about remote deposit capture a lot. So I work in an in office that we don't have a ton of um, branches around, but to us, it doesn't really mean a lot because we have remote deposit catcher, capture. So if you have a stack of checks that you need to get in your bank account, we have devices that you can put on your desk and, and put your checks in. Um, you know, so there's a lot of other things um, that you can do. And then, you know, there's different ways of, there's so many different ways of getting money from one place to another. You don't, you maybe don't even realize and a lot of that, I think, too, especially from working at a community bank, is a lot more accessible than you think it is. Because a lot of business owners, I think, find that that they think, well, I, I can't do that. I can't have that because that's for, you know, somebody that's bigger than I am. And that's not always the case. Okay. And so if you're at a commercial bank or a bigger bank and you and they have an app, and that's, you know, like one of the reasons that you just stay there because it's so easy. Do you yeah. guys also have that kind of, those kind sure. of benefits, too? Yep, we do. Yeah, I think most every bank will have, you know, the basics. Yeah, and we definitely have that too. Great. Um, yeah, and we always say, you know, it's, it's an interesting um, thing that we shoot around here, which is, you know, you don't always need a Cadillac, you know, sometimes <laughs> whatever, the Toyota works just fine, you know, it still gets you from here to there. Yeah. And maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. if especially you are looking for that relationship and you want to feel seen and you want to feel not judged. And frankly, like, I'm going to speak for myself here. I really love working with other women. I feel like they mm -hmm. see me in a different way. I feel like they don't talk over my head. I feel like they don't talk mm -hmm. down to me. I will never forget the first, I was young and I was a teacher and I, somebody, one of my old, one of my teacher friends who was older than me said, you should start to put your money in some financial um, accounts, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. So I went to this guy at a bank and he basically, I say he should all over me. You should do this, you should do this. But there was no talking to me or explaining why. And I just felt so taken advantage of and so not seen. And like I said, money was scary to me. Mm -hmm. So the idea of working with somebody who is not going to judge me, who has been there herself, because you said you're a former small business owner yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I just find the whole thing very appealing. And I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because I want to <laughs> yeah. really encourage money is a hard thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we so. do. Yeah. Like we talk about it all day, but, you know, and remember too, that we're having hard conversations. You know, I, I, I had another, I had a conversation this week with somebody who, who recently lost, um, lost a parent and you know 
think not that I want people to think about those times, but also think about that relationship too. You know, you you need somebody who's going to be there to walk you through the paces. And um, you know, again, money is important. So spend the time, <laughs> take, give yourself the time to go and, you know, find a banker that, that you can trust. And, and yes. yeah. Well, if people are interested in learning more about your specific bank, Tompkins Trust Company, how can they kind of get into your world, follow you, learn about you? I would say, you know, on LinkedIn is a great place. Um, I'm under Heather Delmonico Mulhall and um, I, you know, LinkedIn is a good place. Um, we do have a great website, you know, okay. Tompkins Trust. Um, we have a nice website that you can look at our products. And of course, you know, always um, call, text, email, anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm around. Very responsive, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Well, it's Heather, so is there crazy. anything else you want to share with us? Is there, did we cover it all? I think we really did. You know, hopefully, hopefully everybody kind of got the message and, you know, I think I probably brought it home, which is, you know, um, don't be afraid of your banker. We're here to help you. Um, yes. You know, don't be intimidated by going into the bank. We're, we're just like you guys. And, um, you know, we'll help you in any way we can. Thank you, Heather. This is such a great conversation to have. I love talking about money. I love normalizing this conversation. I love, you know, like I like for my audience to see that this has been a journey I've been on and that I'm not like speaking from the pulpit. I'm really down in the congregation <laughs> with everybody else figuring it out. So I love meeting people that help me have these conversations. So thank you for your time. And also thank you for your tenacity because it has been like back and forth <laughs> with us for almost a year at this point. So I am so grateful that we finally got to have okay. this conversation. Thanks, Heather. Me too. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.